Thanks for tuning into the Boston Roll channel. Liking the video and subscribing to the channel are free and easy for you, and they help me out a lot. If you want to go further with your support, Patreon and YouTube membership offer access to the Boston Roll Discord community, early access to lists, written content, things like that. You can have me play your deck on the channel, and the highest tiers come with individual coaching sessions. If you use YouTube membership, you also get sweet badges and emotes integrated here into YouTube. You can support the channel while you shop at tcgplayer.com by using my affiliate link in the video description. And you can play any deck anytime by using a cardhoarder.com loan account on Magic Online. If you want to wear your support, check out the merch store. And of course, thanks for being here. Now let's go play some Magic. Welcome back to the Boston Roll channel. Today, I am playing Legacy, and we're returning to one of my old favorites. This is Shark Still. This one is a list that I teased a little bit during my Eternal Weekend video. The morning of Eternal Weekend, I woke up, I decided. I thought that black was in a good position as the splash color in a control deck, and I started blowing up Esper Shark still. And while I was brewing this, I saw Pokemoki tweet his uh, four color band with the black Wither Bloom, and the rest is history. You know, I love that deck. That was exactly what I was looking for. But I mentioned that I had worked on this a little bit in the Eternal Weekend video, and Patreon subscriber Jack was like, no, we got to see the rest of that. <laughs> so uh, Jack has. Put the money where the mouth is for me to play the Esper Shark Still version. If you've never seen this deck before, it's been a while since I iterated on it. Standstill, a classic control card. Whenever a player casts a spell, sacrifice Standstill. If you do, each of that player's opponents draws three. So you play this and just bet that you'll be better at winning the game without casting any spells than the opponent is, and eventually this will become an ancestral recall. The ways that we win with this standstill that we can advance the board while opponents hopefully can't shark typhoon four of these you could cycle this make a xx flying shark token and draw a card and that doesn't count as a spell because cycling is an activated ability urza saga you could put constructs into play as activated abilities then you can tutor the retrofitter foundry or the expedition map into play without casting a spell, and that's more bodies because you use map to tutor up the next saga or you just start making bodies with foundry. All of that's without casting a spell. Timeless Dragon. This has plane cycling. So for two, you can discard it, search your deck for planes, put it in your hand. Then it has Eternalize, which is also an activated ability. Exile this card from your graveyard, create a 4-4 black zombie token of it. You can pay four to get a 4-4 flying creature zombie dragon into play without ever casting a spell. And, if that wasn't enough for you, Hall of Heliod's Generosity, one in a white, put target enchantment card from your graveyard on top of your library. That's also an activated ability on a land, no spells involved. Enchantments that you can return to the top of your deck include Shark Typhoon, Urza Saga, and Standstill itself. There's a lot of moving parts here that Standstill doesn't really affect our ability to play the game. We just have so many things to do that aren't spells that we can jam this early and often. There are only three copies in my build instead of the full four because this is a card that if you're behind is really bad. It's only good at parity or when you're ahead and you don't want to draw the second standstill until the first one pops because it just rots in your hand in the meantime. I have learned through trial and error that you don't actually want four standstills. Other card choices in this deck, I do think that Wasteland in a control deck right now is a really good place to be. There are a lot of problematic lands. The Merit Lage is starting to make a comeback. I've seen green-black depths and green-white depths in the meta a lot more recently than I have in the months leading up to this recent run. Urza Saga is a problem, especially in the world where you're playing Standstill. Like, if you play Standstill and the opponent plays Urza Saga you're in trouble. So you need clean answers to Urza Saga. Lands is a powerful deck in the format right now. Just winning with Wasteland is a good thing to do. The Wasteland also gives you a reason to play Crucible of Worlds. This is a fun of one of in the deck. No way to tutor it. Only way to find it is to draw it and cast it. But if you're ever able to Crucible and then stick standstill, it does give you inevitability in control matchups or even against Delver, they don't really play basics anymore. You could refire your Saga every three turns. It gives you inevitability with Hall of Heliod. Like if you mill or this gets destroyed or wastelanded, 
you know that Crucible's in the deck somewhere, and then Crucible can get back Hall, which can get back Shark Typhoon. This is just one piece in the inevitability puzzle. Every turn the game goes longer should favor this deck, and I just want little pieces to keep the puzzle going deep into the late game. This is a blue-white deck. Uh, I've said a lot on the channel about how blue-green is the control core right now because of Uro, but blue-white is the old control core with uh, Sor Supreme Verdict, Swords to Plowshares, Jace, like all of those sorts of cards that you'd expect in a legacy control deck are in the deck. Prismatic ending, and because the black mana, we can get up to three. Three is the magic number. Four is nice to get up to, but you really need your prismatic endings to get up to three, and this deck does have one black source in the main to do that. And the black cards in the sideboard are just three Plague Engineers and a basic swamp to cast them. I looked really hard. I went really deep, honestly, for black cards that can pay off with standstill. The best ones I found were like Bloodgast and Nether Spirit, where like Bloodgast you can just discard to hand size or uh, like cast them, and then even if they die, they come back with land drops under standstill. But Bloodgast doesn't block, and you really need your creatures in a deck like this to block. There were some. I think it was called Bone Dragon. There was like some like 5-4 flying creature that you could pay black black four to put back into your graveyard or into play from your graveyard. I looked at that. There were a couple cards like that, but they were all too janky or they required double black or you need to like attack to turn them on. There was one with Boast or uh, not Boast. Raid. Yeah, Raid. Uh, one of them with Raid. But this deck's not really good at having a creature to attack. There was just they were all just a little too conditional or a little too expensive. And unfortunately, that sweet angle did not develop. So I'm just having a disciplined little splash with Plague Engineer that helps against the the tribe decks, like obviously goblins and elves, and then death and taxes. It's a banger there as well. Back to basics, huge reason to be in a deck like this. There's seven basic lands in this deck. A lot of decks in Legacy right now have zero basic lands. I'm hoping to take some people back to basics. And that's the deck. This is classic blue-white control. It's uh, counter it, kill it, or ignore it based on how important each thing is. Hopefully we draw a bunch of cards with standstill and get into these awesome Shark Typhoon endgames. This is Esper Shark still for Patreon subscriber Jack. Let's do it. I'm on the play in round one. This is the original Island Ponder Keep deck. So here we are. Gotta, gotta live for something or you die for nothing. I'm going to fetch my basic island and cast Ponder. I'm just looking for lands. And there are a lot of them in the deck. Plus the two Timeless Dragons. There's 22 lands plus two Timeless Dragons. It's, it's pretty heavy, actually. Found a land. I'll put it on top. And then there's a Ponder under it. So I can uh, Ponder and then Brainstorm over the next turn cycles to figure out how I need to develop. Ooh, a Ketria Trium. Is this my own deck? My own four-color control deck? I think I'm going to... Ponder first. Cool. I found a basic land and another ponder underneath it. Don't really want to hang my retrofitter foundry just straight out into prismatic ending. So I won't. Here's Soul Guide Lantern. I have to target myself. Bummer. All right. I'm going to exile ponder. I do have Crucible Worlds in the deck. I don't have any sort of Snapcaster or Mystic Sanctuary or any way to get spells back. Guild of the Dead. Okay. They have all the tech lands in their opener. I wonder if this is a four-color band or if it's just something else. I'm going to go for a brainstorm here. There's enough cards in my hand that I would like to turn into different cards. Nice. Uh, now I wish I had played the Retrofitter Foundry last turn. But uh, it is what it is. I see that Field of the Dead over there. I'm still going to bet that Standstill is better for me than it is for them. Ooh, worth a Force of Will. So I got two cards out of it instead of three. Deal. The Force pitched a Snapcaster Mage. And they have Narset. Shit. <laughs> That's a good one. That makes the next stand still pretty bad, too. If they can draw cards, but I can't. Not a good place to be. And now I... I can't cast this Ponder or this Brainstorm. There's the answer to my Retrofitter Foundry. I can't even, like, pretend that... Ugh. That sucks. I guess I can make them play that and put a 1-1 one, one into play. I'll at least demand the answer that 
I can. And this can put a 1-1 into play on the way out, which can pressure Narset. Oh, this deck's getting interesting. Make a servo. Basic Plains Catria Triome. I don't know what's going on over there. None of the Endurance decks would play Basic Plains. But I can't think of a Basic Plains deck that would play Catria Triome either. They are on some shit. I might just draw a card in the end step here, which exposes me to Uro, but gotta do something. I get to draw one card per turn. Their turn and my turn are different turns. Okay, have Swords to Plowshares to punch this through a blocker. And boy, do I need this to connect. Fuck! Alright. I am in a world of hurt. I'm not ready to spend a Ponder yet. Uh, I shuffled away a prismatic ending two turns ago, which I have. I'm living in regret now. Nice brainstorm. What's that like? Draw for turn. Another source of plowshares. Good stuff. Not. Okay. Just a uh, down and dirty, nasty, naked ponder. This narset is becoming a, a problem. Okay. Uh, prismatic ending plays. I desperately need to turn these plows into cards that are actually playable in this matchup. Shark Typhoon, I think, would have won this game 100 turns ago. Or at least removed the Narset. Shark Typhoon naturally predates on Narset because it draws a card on their turn. It's not a spell. It's a an evasive attacker. A lot of good stuff going on with that. And I thought they were sandbagging fetches to make millions of zombies all at once, but they just cracked one of them. Which means they're doing something better than making a bunch of zombies, which, yeah, Jace would have been my guess. <laughs> Shit. Oh, interesting that they brainstormed there. They had an opportunity to fate seal me when I just kept a ponder. So they know the top card is a card that I want. Let's see if it matters. Okay, time to reveal my third color. Underground sea. Prismatic ending. White, black, colorless, or blue. Not colorless, that actually does matter. White, black, blue. Oh, they didn't force me. Brainstorm. Set me free. Put back Plow and Planes. There is a second Tundra in the deck. I'm going to get that now and cast Ponder. Timeless Dragon and my own Jace. Those are both pretty reasonable. I mean, now I'm behind their Jace, but... And I'm behind their Field of the Dead. I think this one's in the bag. It might take a little while, but I don't think we're winning. A fetch land making a zombie. They just fate sealed me. They see the timeless dragon there. They bottomed the timeless dragon. My own Jace. Which will definitely resolve, right? 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 Boo. Okay. I'm going to play this out a little longer to see more cards in their deck. And I guess we can pull ahead on time a little bit. I'm going to plow this zombie. Not a great use of my resources, but I don't see another target right now. Oh god, they play two Field of the Deads? That's good to know. Wow. Horrifying. They're fetching in the end step. That gets them two more. All right, we see red mana for the first time. Wouldn't have seen that if we didn't play it out. Or I guess we saw Catria Triumph, so we've seen everything. And they have another fetch land, which is four more zombies. So fucked up. I've seen enough. Yeah, that Narset slowed down my development. They were able to develop when I couldn't, and then their Jace came down to turn before I could answer it, which would have been easily covered if I could cantrip, it, but I couldn't because of Narset, etc. They just got up under me and were able to win because of it. I think I went back to basics here. I think I want the Plague Engineers, too. If I get two of them in play on Zombie, that shuts them down. I guess we'll look at what all this looks like together. That would be seven cards I'm bringing in. Swords to Plowshares can come out. I probably want one Supreme Verdict still in the deck, but I don't need both. Full Guide Lantern. I didn't see Uro, but we saw Ketria Triome. Are they a Jeskai deck that uses Triome as a different land name? Are they actually a green deck with Uro? We saw Basic Planes, so I, I would be a little surprised if Uro is in this deck, but at the same time... Field of the Dead is in the deck, so Uro makes perfect sense. Tricky. I need my endings. I need my forces. I like Crucible a lot. I like Standstill. Expedition Map can find Saga or in game two here. Uh, 
Sorry we missed the end of sideboarding. My work phone rang right while I was talking through it. The, this is what I took out. I do have all three Plague Engineers. I have the basic. I cut the Swords to Plowshares, Supreme Verdict, and Soul Guide Lantern. I'm just betting against Uro, but it might be in there anyway. I'm going to keep this hand. Island Ponder Keep. I got the back to basics. Fetch Basic Island Ponder. Okay, turn two standstill. If you want to check out the Bosch and Roll merch store, I have a shirt that says Island and Ponder and Planes and Standstill and Sharks. And that is exactly the hand that we have here. It's Island and Ponder and Planes and Standstill and Sharks. <laughs> All right, let's see how bad this carpet gets for me. Now we've seen Basic Forest 2. This is definitely an RO deck. Right, let's take a break here. Take our time. That's the, the flavor text of Standstill. Now we see what the opponent is made of. Uh, there are two things you can do about standstill. One of them is... Oh, wow, they're pyroblasting my standstill. Deal. I'll draw three off that, too. The two things you can do with standstill are crack it right away, figure, you know, it's going to happen eventually, let's just tear off the Band-Aid. And the other is just hit your land drops and try to make more land drops than your opponent, and then... In my end step, when I already have 8 cards in hand, break the standstill then, so then I'll have 11 cards in my hand when I have to go to discard, and then I discard all the cards I draw. It becomes like a big looting instead of a Ancestral Recall. Okay, this Back to Basics is not looking very good right now. Um, I can play it anyway. Like They have two Basics, and they have Carpet. I could get the Basic Swamp and jam it. I could get to work with Shark Typhoon. I'm going to get the Basic Swamp and jam my back to Basics. Basic Swamp does not cast very many spells in the deck, which is kind of giving up on one thing and hopefully paying out another thing. This is an investment in the future. Like, obviously, it is non-functional right now. In fact, it hurts me right now because I had to fetch the Swamp to do it. But I'm hoping that as we develop into this game and they have their Triomes and whatever, that it's worth the spot and they just made white with carpet like if they cast prismatic ending right now on this that's great for me because i have the second one in hand and like i said it's not actually doing anything anyway right, they're not prismatic ending it with a basic planes that's not how that card works life from the loam shit <laughs> okay uh i not only boarded out my graveyard hate but also boarded out my force of negation so that's bad. Oh, that's good. Um, prismatic ending on the carpet. And at least slow them down a little. Take away some of that free mana. My wasteland is locked under my own back to basics right now. We know they have more basics than this. We saw at least a snow-covered island last game. There's Narset. I can't counter her, but I do have the Shark Typhoon this time to pressure her. And they have Red Blast. I am going to tap the Wasteland, give up on that to pressure Narset. I have a lot of basics in the deck. Let's just draw a few of them. That standstill looking pretty embarrassing right now. Uh, Swords of Plowshares is fine. I can make a 2 2 shark in this end step and pressure Narset some more. That Scalding Tarn can get red mana and plow the shark. That's still a 2 for 1, and I doubt they have a basic mountain, so that would cost them on the back to basics. They did not shuffle the Ponder there. They also did not use Narset this turn. Here's my Shark. There is probably Red Blast. Oh, definitely not Red Blast. Interesting. Fetching Tropical Island. Do what? Durance. Uh, that makes sense. Yeah, that blocks the Shark. And they bottomed my graveyard. Thanks. Cool. I can unsummon Endurance with Jace and attack Narset. Uh, they have red over there. I don't really want to use Jace for that. I can Petty Theft Endurance as well. So bounce that, then attack Narset. Narset means that I still can't cast this standstill, even though it's otherwise a great position for it. I could double up on the back to basics. Yeah, what the hell? Let's go. Let's go all the way back to basics. In case they have plans of using this red blast to break out of back to basics later. 
this really commits their red blast to only doing one thing. And if they do that one thing on my shark, then my Jace gets to hang out. This mana does not cast Endurance. Back Narset. There's that red elemental blast. You got it. Here's Jace. Or B storming in response. I guess I could have used the Brazen Borrower to pressure Narset for another turn and then like see if they want to fight over that before I mess with the Jace, but looks like a good time to slam Jace. Jace is in there. I'm going to plus targeting myself. I can't draw cards. Shark Typhoon. Do not put that card on the bottom. That is the card that we play this deck to draw. Field of the Dead. That comes into play tapped. They do get a zombie out of the deal. And I know their hand is full of fetch lands from that loam earlier. That makes life a little difficult. But Shark Typhoon is the great equalizer. I could bounce the zombie with Jace. No, I'm going to eat it with Shark Typhoon and plus Jace. Oops, cancel. I'm going to fetch first and then plus Jace target myself. Because I'm going to use all my mana for the Shark Typhoon. Plus target me. Force of Will. Uh, Yeah, let's leave that on top too. I can Typhoon into the Force and I can pitch Supreme Verdict or Brainstorm or whatever the fuck. All right, they just dredge their loam. So they are betting on Field of the Dead here. 4-4 four, four Shark coming in. Unfortunately, you can't stack that, so I, you would draw first. It's not an evoke creature where uh, you can decide whether it dies or gets its effect first. Like The cycling has to happen before the trigger for the, the creature can go on the stack, so uh, you always make the Shark before you, you draw the card. If I could have done it the other way there, I could have forced and protect my thing. Uh, I have Supreme Verdict I can mop up some Zombos with. It's a temporary measure. It's not pretty. Fucking Narset has ruined this game twice. Uh, this is part of why you don't see decks like this anymore. Okay, Prismatic Ending. White, black, blue. Three colors. Exile Narset. Get her out. Make it gone. Okay, I can plus Jace, and it would survive the turn. Yes, uh, I'm going to plus Jace, again targeting me. Uh, do I want to put that on the bottom? Yes, I think I do. I could brainstorm now. I could still have a land to give. I can't stand still now. I can't stand still ever. Uh, if I find Wasteland, that's actually kind of interesting. All of Heliod, Jace, uh, that was not good. Uh, put back, back up Jace and Supreme Verdict. I can put Typhoon on top of my deck one time, and then I'm locked under my own back to basics. And Field of Dead is good. All these Bant players we figured that out. Some bullshit. Another fetch land. We knew about that because of Loam. Jace takes six, goes down to one. And I draw Supreme Verdict. I'm gonna... I guess if I... Supreme Verdict and plus Jace again, I get another turn out of him. Okay, plus on myself. Uh, yeah, let's put the, the extra Jace on the bottom, actually. And then... Verdict. Oh, I should have brainstormed first. If I find... Wasteland now, I'm gonna feel like a dumbass. Fuck! Yeah, I could have had that all rolled up. We really had it all. But at least I can play Wasteland, and if they fetch, I can waste in response. Okay, okay. I didn't throw it all in the trash, though. If I had brainstormed first, I could have demanded the fetch. And then just swept up all the zombies. Okay, Wasteland, this Field of the Dead in response to the fetch. We know they still have Endurance over there. I guess I'm going to force Endurance. All in, baby. Right, they're brainstorming in response. They don't have it yet. Okay, my force resolved. Crucible's on top of the deck. I'm getting Jace at least once. Alright, a naked Snapcaster Mage. Just butt naked out there. Targeting Red Blast that they can't cast, sure. They didn't dredge Loam, that's interesting. I would have been all in on getting that Field of the Dead back online. And they can't, like, forget that they have it, because Moto is very obnoxious about asking you if you want to dredge your draw step. 
Another Snapcaster. Do they have another red source? Or are they Snap Loaming? Snap Pondering. Okay. In Back to Basics, they just saved my Jace, or else they would have Snap Red Blasted. I don't love that my Hall of Heliod is under wraps right now, but my Jace is in play because of Back to Basics. Fetch to Savannah. This is Crucible of Worlds. Jace is dead anyway, so I'm going to Brainstorm. Stand still. Um, I'm going to put Land Brainstorm on top. Crucible of Worlds. Get in there. See how this goes. I'm going to play... I believe there's one island left in my deck. Play the Flooded Strand. And I can just bet on Stand Still. All right, please don't Endurance in response. Here's Stand Still. Okay, Stand Still's in play. I can... I guess... No, no, I should not have cast uh, Raisin Bee. I can regrow Shark Typhoon once, and that's the Hall of Heliod. I take some damage from Snapcaster in the meantime, but I have enough life to absorb that, and if I just get a big enough Shark in play, I'm stable. I have plenty of life points to figure this out with. Also, if I just draw a Timeless Dragon or Urza Saga or anything, we're good there. Correct, it doesn't matter. I'm going to fetch away the Brainstorm on top of my deck. That's not a good card right now. Okay, Island in play. I'm going to take a draw before I use my Hall next turn. Play Wasteland. Just start constricting their mana. I'm going to hit this Savannah. I take four here, go to 14, put Shark Typhoon on top. They just dredged Loam, so they, they're trying here. They might be betting against the Standstill that... uh. Loam is better. Bill the Dead probably does just completely outpace me. Okay. They're giving me the standstill. Um, I'm just going to draw the three without putting Shark Typhoon on top. And then one, two, three, four, five. Counter that. And in the end step, I'm going to go after Shark Typhoon. Or I could go after Standstill now. I, don't know, I get blown out by Endurance either way. This is just a strip mine if they have endurance. Oh, they don't have double green. So it would cost them two cards if they did that. Okay. I'm going to play Urza Saga from my hand. One, two, one, two, three, four. I can ponder and still make a big enough shark. Ooh, there's the other Jace. Wow, this is fun. Um, I'm just going to keep all of these on the top. Don't shuffle my library. Let's go. Big shark, do 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 do. They dredged loam again. Still don't see an Uro. Um, that sucks, but okay. Very. That one's a pain in the ass. Uh, but they can't cast it this turn. Loam. Yeah, loam resolves. We're back in the field. I don't think they can attack here. Wow. All right, they must have swords to plowshares, but even that is like okay. They saw this Shark Typhoon, it's face up, unless they think that it's time to just start whipping two damage chunks at my face. Block one of these. Alright, they don't appear to have Swords to Plowshares. This is big enough to attack and kill Narset. Saga ticks up. Wasteland. Take out the field. Attack Narset. And I'm just going to pass. I don't think Jace develops this board the way I need it to. Teferi is really good, but Shark Typhoon is really good against Teferi. There is a Retrofitter Foundry in my deck I can tutor up. Loam, you got it. Bill the Dead's coming back. They don't know about the second Shark Typhoon. There's Teferi. They should probably attack first, but okay. Make a Gigantic Shark. This one's a 5. Block Snapcaster. You have to go to Cleanup? Yeah. Take that. Raven's Crime, yeah. One, two. Activate Saga on the way out. Get a 2-2, two, two, which becomes a 3-3, three, three, which can become a 4-4, four, four, basically at will. And then Wasteland can take out Field again. Shark can attack Teferi. And I think I'm just going to hold up Brazen Borrower and activate Retrofitter Foundry. They can't dredge Loam forever. I'm actually beating that. Like, Crucible is outstripping their loam. Unless they find an Uro, if they even have one. Which seems crazy that they wouldn't, but we really haven't seen it yet. 
Double the dead again. Another zombie. But I have a 3-3 in front of their army of 2-2s at this point. Brainstorm. Still relentlessly attacking. I will block with my 3-3 in the end step. Make a servo and cast Brazen Borrower. Okay, now I'm the beatdown. Good luck, have fun. Versus Saga, is that better than Wasteland? I don't think so. Wasteland the field. Attack with my creatures that are big enough to attack. Now they're in chump block mode. Hell yeah. One, two, three, four. Here's Jace. Oh, surprise that resolved. Time to brainstorm. Found a force of will to protect myself. Put some of these shitty fetch lands on top. And go ahead. Casting Jace. Do I even care? I guess. Yeah, let's just push towards the finish line here because the clock is our biggest opponent now. As usual. Never so worried about the, the opponent. It's always the clock. Wasteland, take out this Caracas. Jace, bounce this zombie. I don't think I needed to do any of that, but I'm just going to make sure this attack is lethal. In we go. This is the same game where they narcided me and then had Field of the Dead and made a bunch of zombies, and Shark Typhoon is just more powerful than all that shit. Okay, Graveyard Hate's coming back in. Whoops. Soul Guide Lantern. All right, Plague Engineer is bad. That... That juke was cute, but not actually a thing. Uh, Test of Talents can hit Loam. Counter target instant or sorcery. And exile all copies of it. Yeah, Test of Talents. I like Force of Negation against Loam, and it's also castable against Planeswalkers, but Test of Talents, just randomly removing their prismatic endings or whatever, could be pretty sick. All right, my graveyard hates back in now. I have one sweeper against the Zombie Horde. The real problem is I have six minutes to win a game. Obviously, that important work bone call would come in the middle of a timed match of control v control. I'm going to keep. I got land drops to make. That's all you really want in the world. Expedition map. That's cool. Um, I'm not going to play expedition map into a prismatic ending, though. And I am going to play around Carpet of Flowers as long as I can. Where's the saga, baby? I think that's better than wasting them. Oh, I've been wrong before. Okay, Uro is in this deck. How did they not play it or cast? Like, we saw like 50 of the cards in their deck last round. And here's Uro suddenly. From the top rope. John Cena style. Narset. Uh, I'm not as worried about Narset here because I have real attackers just already showing up. I can put lethal on Narset immediately. Which is something I have not been able to do in any of the previous games. We get Island and Plains. But to make a construct now, untap, make another construct, tutor up Soul Guide Lantern, clip that Uro, Soul Guide Lantern, exile Uro, Wasteland, past Expedition map. I'm just making sure this uh, construct is as big as it can be during the, the combat phase. And step brainstorm. The Force of Will is nice here. Let's see how far they're willing to go to play around back to basics. Like, do they fetch basic planes here? Or do they need their mana to function? Nope, went with the planes. That's a deal. Ending, yeah, that's not the fight. Ponder, sure. Uro, that's also not the fight. I have Soul Guide Lantern in play already. They're one land away from being in the field. Gonna make my attack for three first before I activate Expedition Map. Map, find me Urza Saga. It's gonna continue this relentless attack. We know they have Pyroblast over there that can hit my Force of Will. Oh shit, I just like fucking blinked and forgot that there I was supposed to exile Uro. Damn it! <laughs> well, now they have Uro for no reason. Great. Ah, uh, damn it. <laughs> I was looking at the clock and like planning my next turn and just forgot I had to exile their graveyard. Uh, my life is pain. They still don't have Field of the Dead though. <laughs> we count those. Well, might as well draw a card now, right? That's already failed. Uh, okay. Supreme Verdict does clear Uro. Uh, so does Brazen Borrower, kind of. Uh, if they want to Pyroblast this, that's like kind of medium. 
as far as pyroblasting goes. I'm going to force of will that pyroblast, exiling back to basics, and hope that they try to brainstorm in response. Force of negation. Okay, so that's countered. That's gone. And I'm going to pass the turn and try to hull breach their Uro draws, I guess. They have two cards, one card in their hand plus whatever they draw right now. I just played into Force of Will, but a removal spell would have got me anyway. And they might just not attack if I heads up the Hull Breacher. All right, Moment of Truth, what's your last card? Tell me now. Breacher resolved. Moment of Truth. Yeah, of course. All right, it was Swords to Plowshares. I'm not going to block. Now they're back to one card in hand. Uh, Saga. Going to float mana. Pop it. I'm not going to make a construct. I'm going to get Retrofitter Foundry. And then... Uh, blue. Blue. Colorless. Uh, wait, I can get a Plains, right? I still have my land drop. Yeah. Timeless Dragon. Plain Cycle this. Get Tundra. Play Tundra. Jace. What's your last card? One card that came off the top at random is in their hand right now. Jesus Christ. Okay. Well, I deserve all of this because I didn't uh, do the thing when I was supposed to do the thing. I would be easily winning this game if I wasn't stressed about the clock and made my play correctly. Now I am going to block because I'm going to Supreme Verdict next turn. And they follow up with Narset because why the fuck not? Oh, they have Jace too, don't worry. If you thought this game might be competitive. Okay. Uh, I can't come back from this in two minutes. Uh, if I had just exiled the graveyard, they would have drawn three fewer cards this turn. Those runner, runner, runner miracle top decks would still be the top three cards of the deck because they wouldn't have drawn them yet. So uh, I had to punt and they had to be super lucky to get out of this game. So uh, good show for the deck, not so much for the pilot. On to the next one. On the draw for round two. This hand has no... Col oh, it does have colored mana in the form of Timeless Dragon. I'm actually going to keep this for science. I play a high land count, and Timeless Dragon can get me where I'm going on turn three. If this is a slow control matchup, that might be good enough. I also could just draw an island on turn one. Never had any doubt. Island, ponder. And I get to bluff that I'm Doomsday. <laughs> I'm such a casual every time I say that, but it's so funny. This underground sea, the one of underground sea cast ponder, and now my opponent has a completely different signal than what they should actually be thinking about. And you better believe I'm going to slam standstill if I get the opportunity this turn. Prismatic Vista, go. Ooh, nice. I drew another land that does stuff. Standstill. Freeze. Take your time. I will fight over this with force. They go down two cards, I go down two cards, and then I go up three cards eventually. Like, Timeless Dragon is right here in my hand. I don't even have to, like, draw to a threat. I have one already. Force Pitching Jace. Force Pitching Ponder. Oh, and they had another Force Pitching Hull Breacher. Okay. Uh, I spent three cards, they spent four. I'm still ahead on that exchange. See what's left in the tank over there. Uh, Narset, my great nemesis. Okay. They're about to pull back ahead on cards. Swords to Plowshares. Okay, that means I'm going to Wasteland them. Wasteland this. And Soul Guide Lantern. Get this ahead of the, the game here. Exile the Tropical Island. Just in case they have Loam. Brainstorm. Okay, that's probably going to turn this Plow into something better. I'm going to draw a card with Soul Guide in the end step. Just need to draw cards where I can in the face of Narset. They didn't find a land drop off that Brainstorm. That's good for me. All of Heliod's generosity is pretty cool, but there's nothing to buy back yet. Like, the, the standstill is not going to help me with Narset in play. I'm going to Timeless Dragon for another Tundra. Or maybe I should get Basic Planes. Do I think they have back to Basics in their main deck? Nope. Nah, I'm just getting Tundra. Fuck it. Ooh, Drew Island anyway. I'll show them the... I'll use the Tundra that they already saw. I know they have Plow over there somewhere. Uh, prismatic ending on Narset, black, white, blue. That was already a three for one. That's a good exchange for them. 
This is the turn that they're getting out of their brainstorm lock. Still don't have a land. Uh, I'm going to regrow standstill in my upkeep and then try to cast it. This gets around the swords to plowshares in their hand. Like I can unearth my dragon next turn and then when they try to kill it, I draw a bunch of cards. Awesome. All of this is going exactly how it's supposed to. 4-4 four, four Dargan. Yeah, they're just popping in the end step. Uh, I'm not going to force that. I already got several cards off of that exchange. I can save force to make sure they don't have like Narset or Jace or something that can really actually catch them back up into this game. Because I'm just going to rebuy Standstill and cast it again this turn. And they have to play through Standstill every turn the rest of this game until they get ahead on board. <laughs> and they're brainstorm locked again. Woof. I guess I can brainstorm now. Just use my uh my good energy. Wow. Okay. Um put island. Oh, there's a standstill in my hand. I don't even need to rebuy the one. Okay. I'm gonna put back island and Urza Saga, and then I'm just gonna draw Saga. Okay. Urza Saga, trigger, retrofitter foundry, and still. And I can hard cast force of negation to protect this. Didn't even need to. Oh, we're having a good time. Okay, I draw three. They're targeting my foundry with standstill, or with uh, prismatic ending, standstill triggers. I get to force of negation this. If that just resolved. Where are their force wheels? They have seven cards in hand, seven spells in hand. Oh, yeah. They gave up. About time. I mean, it's easy to say, like, haha, I beat up on this opponent who got brainstorm locked multiple times. But we take those. My relentless stream of land drops, the standstill, like standstill just went off. Hall of Heliod and standstill was awesome in in combination that game. I don't think I want surgical. I like Hall Breacher and Test of Talents. I'm going to shave on swords to plowshares. I'm going to try to beat Uro in the graveyard, not on the board. It, but I still have like ways to fight on the board with the Supreme Verdicts, etc. I think after seeing last match that... Like, if I just had my Hall of Heliod active last match, there would have been, like, no competition whatsoever. But the fact I only got one activation out of it under Back to Basics, when Back to Basics didn't even really shut them down, was actually really embarrassing. Do I want Seal of Cleansing over the fourth plow? They could have Sylvan Library, they could have Carpet of Flowers. I don't think so. I'm doing this. Island Ponder Keep. Don't even need to look at the other five cards. I'm in. Ponder from you. Chose to shuffle. I wonder if they kept another one lander. I mean, I did. I can't judge. Found another land. Uh, that land can cast at least the brainstorm and activate the expedition map on the following turn. Okay, there's some action here. We saw Hall Breacher in their deck. They pitched it to Force last game, so I want to be cognizant of getting my halls breached. Probably means I brainstorm right now. Maybe should have saved that land drop, but it's okay. Um, Swords to Plowshares. I think I should hang on to that because of the threat of Hall Breacher. Put back Test of Talents and Jace, and then we're going to play Expedition Map, which can shuffle on my upkeep if I decide I don't want Test of Talents. Ice Fang Coatl in the end step. Sure. They're a Coatl build. I wonder if they have Terminus. Like if this is like the pure Bant, like old school miracle style deck. A prismatic ending on that's not a huge deal as far as all the things it could conceivably target in magic. And then Jace is under this. I actually really like Jace. No surprise there. That card's fucking busted, but I'm just gonna play Wasteland and hold up Test or Cycle Shark. If they play their land drop, I probably won't Cycle Shark because of Hall Breacher. But if they just attack, I'll take the trade. Brainstorm. Okay, they're not... I, my hull is not getting breached this turn. Ooh, maybe this would have been a really good test of talents. Uh, getting rid of their brainstorms and getting the tempo play. I don't know. Maybe it'll be better later. I do like having a completely clear board for my Jace to hang out on. This was a very comparable exchange. Like, we both... Spent some mana, got a 1-1 and drew a card out of it, and then they traded for each other. So that was that was card neutral. I don't think I'm slamming Jace this turn. I have things I can do with my mana at instant speed. Probably more than they do. 
Another Coatle. It is. What fun. As much as I'd love to crack off Wasteland, I don't think that is the play. Okay, maybe I waste them in beginning of combat. Alright, now it doesn't matter. Uro. Uh, yeah, Uro is here. I'm just going to plow the front half of Uro. Get that out of the game, out of the mix. That's a favorable exchange for them. But Uro is uh, why fair control decks barely exist anymore. Or Azorius based control decks. Fair control decks are great. I'm actually going to fetch the Underground Sea while I can. That's my third color for Prismatic Ending. And let's just take another bounce off this Ice Fank Waddle. All right, this is too many Prismatic Endings. Okay, thank you, deck. That's what I needed. Brainstorm right away. Jace just fucking slammed in there. Put back these Prismatic Endings. Make my land drop. Crucible is now threatening to take over this game. The third Coatle. Oh, dress down. Yeah, whatever. Are they just going to sneak an arrow in on me in the main phase with this end step? Dress down. It's almost better not just arriving. Because then they don't get the card out of it on the front half and I can just untap and cast ending. Look at my opponent's mana base. They definitely don't have back to basics. Or at least they wouldn't board it in against me. Uh, it's a fairy. I guess it's now or never, huh? Force that. Pitching force. And Teferi's in the bin. What on my turn now? I get to have a whole turn? To myself? Um, I'm going to Wasteland their Tundra in my upkeep. I'm going to Brainstorm with Jace. Saga is a good one. Test of Talents is also a good one. I could play Saga and make sure Crucible resolves. Yeah, I actually like that better than trying to waste them again. Here's Crucible. Okay, test of talents. Negate OP. They could go for ending on my Crucible. And then I will try to get rid of those from their whole deck. I hope they have three more in their hand. Oh, there's one in the graveyard. They can't have three in their hand. Oh my god, they had two in their hand! The fucking Shadow Realm. <laughs> they old him to negate. Uh, Days Undoing and Dress Down is in their hand. Bang. That was that was absolutely disgusting. <laughs> Wait. Oh, do, is this have the draw clause? Oh, okay. Uh, that player draws a card for each card exiled from their hand this way. Never mind. I forgot that uh, they fix these cards so that you don't just randomly get blowouts. Maybe I should have left some of them in their hand if that's the case. Okay. Uh, now I start making wastelands from the graveyard. Blocking them out, slow and steady. Jace keeps this pressure going. This is what I was talking about with that one of Crucible in the main deck. Card is unbeatable in Control Mirrors. Saga can pop and get the Soul Guide Lantern and make sure Uro doesn't show up and somehow take over this game. Uh, we know they have Dress Down in hand. So I'm not going to sink another two mana into this. I'm going to get Soul Guide Lantern. Exile there. To fairy, I guess. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Sland. I'm just gonna keep wasting. Oh, I could have taken them off white. Oh fuck. Do they have Hall Breacher? Did I just play into this? Oh my god, I'm the biggest idiot on the entire planet. Wow. Yep, I deserve that. I did not for one second respect what they were actually capable of. So I have to put two cards on top of my deck. They get three treasures, and then. Prismatic ending, blue, black. Oh no, they have a counter spell. Oh, it's dress down. I don't care about that. Uh that unless it cantrips into a counter spell. Oh my god. That was bad. <laughs> I thought of that one second after I activated Jace. And I'm gonna shuffle away these prismatic endings. I've been kicking those around. <laughs> Auto bug. Shuffle. Get back ending. They have another basic land now. They have their own Jace, so now we have a Jace War. Yeah, that just one second blink of, like, whoops, Hall Breacher was so devastating. Okay, Brainstorm. All of Heliod. Is that something I want? Uh, my deck doesn't make four colors, so Prismatic Ending's not helpful here, and I have infinite land drops already. Blooded Strand's bad. Do I keep wasting? 
Or do I get Saga going? I think I'm going to waste. Take them off. White, at least temporarily. I know they have a treasure. You don't have to tell me about the treasure. I know. And I can decide if I want to cycle Timeless Dragon or get Shark Typhoon attacking the Jace. But attacks into Endurance aren't very good. Do I want to test of Talents the Potter? No, I want to save it for Loam. I've been on this Wasteland strat for so long that I should not let a single Loam undo me. Uro, okay. Right, Uro missed on the land drop. I want to shuffle my deck, so I'm going to cycle Timeless Dragon. Grab a Tundra. Brainstorm with Jace. Okay, standstill is the cat's ass. Put back. Two lands. Get Wasteland. Waste your Tropical Island. Pass standstill. And pass the turn. I can shuffle my deck with Timeless Dragon again. Clear those cards I don't want on top. I expect they have to play into the standstill. Like they're losing this game in so many directions if they don't. I have Saga in the graveyard. I have Dragon in the graveyard. Okay, they have blue, blue, green, green. And decided not to use it. There is, I believe, one planes left in my deck I can get with this. Oh, right, I just put the Tundra back in. Never mind, there were two. The same one I got last turn. It was still there. The second standstill. I can have two of them. That's not how that works. Please don't do that. Okay, uh, I will put the Tundra back in the deck again. And Wasteland back in the deck again. I'm going to play Urza Saga now, and I'm going to eternalize a dragon. No, I'm not going to eternalize a dragon. They have Jason play. They can just bounce it. I can cycle Shark Typhoon to kill Jace this turn, and then I'm set up for the future. If they cast an instant in the end step, yeah, this is the ugly end step standstill where I have to discard a bunch of cards. But uh, that's fine. I don't even need all these cards. Oh, another Coatl. This is fun. Okay, in the end step, discard Flooded Strand, Flooded Strand, Wasteland, and Tundra. I have Crucible, and they don't have any more Prismatic Endings. I saw to that. Carpet. Uh, that's pretty good. Um, it's good for three mana. Sure, I'll fight over it next turn with these endings in my hand. I'm going to Shark Typhoon for one. Because they have Death Touch, there's no reason to make it any bigger. 1-1 one, one creature. There's no planes left in my deck, just in case I come up with a third Timeless Dragon somewhere. Like if they Endurance me or something, but that would put Tundra back in my deck too, so that doesn't make any sense. They get 3 mana off of their carpet. I expect we'll see Uro here. Brainstorm. I'm not going to spend Test of Talents on that. I really want to save Test to win a Counter War with. Touching Prismatic Vista for a fifth basic land. Brainstorm. Uh, if they cast Uro this turn, it'll cost them their treasure. Yep, here comes Uro. There he is. I miss having Uro in my deck, in these Esper colors, when you don't get to play that card. It's so good. Uh, this one, I have a problem with. Exile Standstill to counter this. I do need to draw cards to win the game. Saga ticks up. I can exile Uro and Carpet. White, blue, black. I'm going to start with exiling Uro, see how that goes. I would really like to plus Jace this turn. Though I guess I don't have to if there's only that one in play. Um, I could, yeah, I want to brainstorm now. Okay, yeah. Uh, brainstorm, put planes back into the deck, then I can play a fetch land and. Fetch it. Flooded Strand, get the planes I just shuffled away. Or maybe I get Island. Yeah, I already have a planes in play. Prismatic Ending, the carpet. And now I can cast Test of Talents also. Alright, slow and steady. Jace will go to 1 this turn. My Hall of Heliod is ready to party, though we haven't seen an Endurance yet out of the opponent. I'm starting to feel this one slip a little bit on the strength of that Uro. Uh, pulled them ahead of my Wasteland plan, etc. All Breacher. That's not a card I want to play against. Uh, I'm going to have to lose my Shark Typhoon to do it. Because I want to protect this forest with Test of Talents. And I have Shark Typhoons. I have Hall of Heliod right here. It's in my hand. Shark Typhoon's in my graveyard. No sweat. Jace goes down to one. Draw for turn. And make a Construct. Search for Retrofitter. 
I can play the hall. Uh, I'm going to plus Jace target myself. They've been brainstorming so much, it, I'm not going to control them. Uh, do not put Brainstorm on the bottom. I like that card. Hall of Heliod from hand. Okay, here we are. Jace is brainstorming over there. They have 12 cards left in their deck. Uh, this is unfortunately going to resolve. But now I actually have pressure on board between the Construct and the Retrofitter. I can do stuff. So they have had a day's undoing forever in their hand. We saw that on the first test of talents. So I got to be careful I don't get just like treasure blasted out of this game. Days Undoing as Graveyard Hate is actually more important than Days Undoing as Mind Twist on this board. Yeah, they don't even get to attack anymore. Uh, do I think that a 1-1 one, one or a... I think Shark Typhoon's better than 1-1. One, one. I'm going to rebuy Typhoon. And now that I know Brainstorm's on top of the deck, I, I really want to hide that thing. Okay, um, if I unsummon Ice Fang Coatl, then I can... Blast Jace, and they can't replay it this turn. I right, get rid of that. I have to imagine they have a Swords to Plowshares, but what am I going to do about it? Attack Jace. Um, I could fight over this and then get got by the Days Undoing, but do I even get got by that? I mean, they get a fresh seven cards. Jace is a problem, though. Yeah, I'm going to test of talents. Let's go. Uh, they have two plows in their hand, two back to basics, days and doing. Wow, remember when I said this deck doesn't have back to basics in it? Um, I'm actually going to exile none of these anywhere. I guess I'll get the one in their graveyard. Uh, they have three days undoing, one veil of summer, and a carpet left. Uh, I'm just going to get the one in their hand in library. Or the, they can keep the ones in their hand. I just want Jace dead. Okay, Jace is dead, and I just made a big bet that I can beat Days Undoing. Let's see if it's true. I'm going to replay Urza Saga from my graveyard while I still have a graveyard. And I'm going to escape Timeless... Nope, I'm not. I don't have to void. <laughs> JK. All right, here we go. Can I beat Days Undoing? I can put two 1-1s one into play. Uh, it would tap them down to one or two mana. I would have a 4 4 2 one ones. They, oh, right. The Swords to Plowshares. That was in their hand the whole time. I was about to say, ooh, they drew their last Swords to Plowshares, but no, I left two in their hand. Remember when I did that? Okay, Ice Fang Coatl resolves. Okay, what are they waiting for on this day's undoing? Let's fucking go. Um, I'm going to let it resolve and take my one draw from day's undoing rather than Cycle Shark Typhoon. Oh, shit. That ends the turn. I forgot to activate all my shit. Right. They tricked me. I, yeah, I forgot to make a servo in response. That's actually really bad. All right, I'm going to plus them with Jace. Uh, no, don't put that on the bottom. I can't imagine that's the going to be the difference maker. And I will ponder into the, the thing. All right, Timeless Dragon's a good one. Don't shuffle. Timeless Dragon is a source of card advantage without drawing cards. Now the clock suddenly matters a lot because we just reset this whole game. I'm disappointed in myself for missing the the retrofitter activation. To fairy, that's pretty strong. That can bounce any of my powerful permanents in play. Luckily, I have so many of them that it's not like a free roll here. You're targeting Saga, sure. One, two, make my construct. Yeah, I was going to get to replay that anyway with Crucible. Probably a reasonable target. New Jace. Yeah, I spent all that time killing the old Jace, and here's a new one. Gets to bounce the Construct. There is no sack a Construct mode, so that's gone. Still don't really have an attack, though. Make a Servo. Draw. There's a Saga. Trigger. I know it's on top of my deck, but I forgot. I'm not going to lie. Uh. One, two, three, four, five. Cast Timeless Dragon. Just a boom boom. Uh, I will target myself with Jace again. Raisin B is on top. Uh, do not shuffle that away. It's actually a good one. 
And I'm going to attack Teferi. Force the block. Start clearing out their material. Got to watch out for back to basics. We know it's over there somewhere. It would actually be a great turn to slam back to basics. But we don't want to talk about that. Bounced my dragon with Jace. That's fine. End step. Make a servo. And they plowed it immediately. That's fine. Definitely consider that to be a positive exchange. Spank Waddle. Sure. My draw step like I can respond ever. Okay, their day's undoing now. Um, I've already drawn cards for the turn. Yeah, that works. Story checks out. Got me. Plus on Jace. Target me. Uh, no. Or yes, I do want this on the bottom because I'm playing Saga next turn. They fate plus to fairy and fate sealed me. And my engine's in play. Uh, fate sealing me isn't a huge deal. I mean, I would like to have a draw step, but at the same time, not really what this game's about. One, two, make a construct. Probably should activate it at Retrofitter Foundry first in case they plow here. That's just a life I don't get to gain now. All right, they didn't do that though. We're all good. Jace, they leave me with that? Oh, probably dead because I already have one. Okay, uh, make a construct. Tutor for something. Soul Guide Lantern. Exiling a day's undoing. Sounds good. Whatever. Play Saga immediately while I still have priority in case they have some sort of trick. Plus Jace, target them. And now that they're fate sealing me, I'm gonna do this give the same courtesy. Uh I am gonna bottom Ice Fang Quaddle because I'm trying to crash in here. I'm gonna attack Narset and Jace. I'm gonna attack to Fairy with the servo. I can't kill either of them, but I can take them off the extra card and bounce with to Fairy at least. Alright, Quaddle, sure. And dress down. My goodness. Okay. I've been undressed in spectacular fashion. I will trade with the Quaddle rather than make... Oh. Alright, they didn't block. Cool. That's also a deal. Dress down, and they're casting Hall Breacher while they're still dressed down. Okay. Hall Breacher is much better than Narset with the Days Undoing. Eight Seal Me with Teferi. Okay, I'm going to make a Thopter. I'm going to untap Retrofitter Foundry. And they're plowing in response. You got it. Okay. All this damage is going towards Jace. Sure. Happens. You got me. And I can't draw a card with Soul Guide Lantern now because Hull Breacher shuts that down. And plus target me. Shark Typhoon, do not put that on the bottom. Because it doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm going to plane cycle this anyway. Get some card advantage where I can. One, two, three, four. All right, I can't activate that though. All right, the clock is actually the game here. Like, neither of us can win this game in any sort of reasonable time frame. So I just need to click fast whatever I end up doing. 3-3. Three, 4-4. Three. Four, four. That's even better. Oh, right. I have Crucible. <laughs> I don't even recognize the Masterpiece frame as a, a magic card. Okay, uh, create a 1-1 one, one servo. Now I can draw a card because Hallbreacher is sleepy. That was a weird brainstorm. Uh, I'm going to trade with a Kowaddle rather than Chump Hall Breacher. Like, this Jace is just distraction anyway. Back to basics, that's rough. Um, is that worth a card? Uh, yeah, I'll still draw a card. I have a lot of basics in the deck. Let's find some of them. Okay, I can uh, bounce Hall Breacher this turn. I'm out of zeros. Okay, that's... Or, zeros and ones. Replace Saga... Bounce Hall Breacher. They replay it. It's going to cost them a bunch of lands. Cycle Shark Typhoon for one. It's just here to block. They should Hall Breach in response. Nope. They let me draw a card. Easy. Okay, block. It's super annoying that they have all these dope planeswalkers. That mean that I can't just retrofitter, activate, and right, Hall Breacher's back. You got it. Okay, now I have to servo. Test of Talents, but they're going to Days Undo Me. Okay, sure. Uh, that goes up one. Base plus Target Me. Uh, no. Or, yes, I don't want Force of Will. 
Uh, Jace bounced that. I'm ahead 20 seconds right now, and I have less to do each turn than they do. I think I'm going to win by the clock here. Not proud, but we take them. Where's the plowshares? You got it. Now I can have six. Jace finally died. I think this Jace was a giant distraction, and they could have won this game a long time ago if they valued my life points at all. Okay, a fetch land's actually a great draw here. Uh, Soul Guide Lantern comes back. Yeah, I'm going to exile Days Undoing. Fetch land, go. And yeah, now I can hit basic land drops for a very long time with Crucible. Set up a chump block. Block. Shark Typhoon, that's a sweet one. Uh, Kawadal, whatever. They keep choosing really strange times to cast their spells, considering that they have Teferi in play and can do whatever they want whenever they want. Alright, I'm not going to cast Shark Typhoon. They could literally just bounce it with the onboard Teferi. Oh shit, I forgot to activate in response. Whoops. Okay, I'm going to have to Shark Typhoon to try to eat this Hall Breacher. And they do have two Swords of Plowshares left in their deck, unfortunately. Because I didn't exile them from their hand that time. Okay, maximum elbow tap. Can I eat the hull breacher? They get a treasure out of this. Unless they dress down in response. <laughs> then they get nothing. Okay, they got a treasure. Block the hull breacher. Bang. That actually worked. I am shocked. They can unsummon that after combat. Another coaddle. They have nine cards left in their deck to my 40. There's a saga. I don't think you're helpful anymore. <laughs> Another... Upkeep Kowaddle, inexplicably. Uh, okay, Polluted Delta, play that again. Retrofitter Foundry, replay that. Go. Gonna take three damage here. Plus to parry, cast Ponder. I'm now a full minute ahead on the clock. Another Ponder. The grinding power of this deck over the last two rounds has really been shown. Like, they're... My opponents have had overwhelming advantage at multiple points through the last couple games, but the uh, just... Crucible, Retrofitter Foundry, Urza Saga, Looping. This game is actually still close somehow. Maybe it's not actually close, and I'm just watching the clock. Ooh, that's the last fetchable land. Uh-oh. We're out of basics. That means it's time to play Urza Saga. And attack Narset. See if they got a trick for this one. Wow, Narset's just dying? How did this happen? Wait, wait, one, two, bang. Supreme Verdict. Board's clear. Let's do this shit. Carpet makes one billion mana. One entire billion. And they conceded. Like, obviously the clock is part of this game, but if they don't have an Endurance in their deck, I believe I've exiled all their Days Undoings. Yeah, all three of the Days Undoings are exiled. They only have two cards left in their deck, and I can Soul Guide Lantern them even if they have Endurance. I think I just decked them fair and square. On top of the timeout, I think I actually won this game where my opponent had all of these resources going for so long to my almost nothing. But yeah, we ground him out. That's a, that's a legitimate win. Put it on the board. We're a few rounds into the video. Thanks for sticking with me. Friendly reminder that if you're still here and having fun, smash that subscribe button. And if you want to play what I'm playing, you can use my affiliate link for TCG Player to support the channel while you shop for cards, and you can try any deck anytime with a cardhoarder.com loan account for Magic Online. All these links are in the video description below. Now back to the league. I'm on the draw in round three. Island Ponder, baby. I also have turn two standstill, that doesn't hurt. Urza Saga does hurt the turn two standstill option, though. Uh, it's getting worse. Need a wasteland. Um, this pile of lands is not disappointing to me. Okay, I'm going to put the fetch land on top with Caracas under it. And I have land drop set up for a little while. Okay, turn two standstill is off the table. If I were on the play, I would still turn two standstill and just have it first. Is there any world where I'm supposed to force some negation that lotus petal? I feel like this is a painter deck. I'm going to brainstorm. Uh, didn't find the wasteland I was looking for. Put back these two A6. Or I don't think this is a Caracas matchup. Caracas and Island can go back. I'm going to fetch another Island anyway. And I have one Plains, which is usually the number you want. Though Supreme Verdict does a card in my deck. All right. We'll see how this goes for me. Is this like a Grixis Painter deck? What's going on over there? Explain it to me immediately. 
Okay, I'm going to fetch Tundra to represent Swords to Plowshares in case they're Painter. It can force some negation. All right. Oh, God. They're Minotaurs. I'm so excited. Yes. We might just die right now. There's like the multi-combat Minotaur. I don't even know what all the Minotaurs actually do, but I'm so excited. So we put a Minotaur permanent from your hand onto the battlefield. Okay, uh, that also beats Standstill. <laughs> Just fucking saying. Um, there's a Saga. Let's get to work on that. Um, and at this point, bet. If you have Minotaurs in your hand to put into play, I feel like a lot of them have haste. Like, they could put one in in the end step. I'm not beating Didgeridoo anyway. Let's just see how dead I actually am. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Whenever this or another Mono Token Minotaur enters the battlefield, create a 2 3 Minotaur. Minotaurs get plus 1, plus 0, and gain menace until all turn. Yep, that's the good one. Uh, I am not going to be able to keep up to that with my saga. Oh, especially if they have more Minotaurs in their hand. Yeah. Didgeridoo just obliterates standstill. The fuck is this? Uh,. If the tribute wasn't paid, you may cast an instant or sorcery. So the tribute is, uh, uh, no. Go ahead, cast an instant or sorcery. I dare you. Oh God, am I dead? Search your library for four minotaurs. Okay. Uh, I'm going to force of negation that and hope to draw supreme verdict. Okay, here we are. Supreme verdict off the top. No whammies. Shit. Okay. Uh. What can I do here? I can brainstorm looking for Supreme Verdict. Right, Swords of Plowshares is pretty good. Put back Wasteland and Island, or it's Island Island. Island Island. Um, Fetchland. Which of these is actually killing me? Uh, Minotaurs get bigger. Yeah, that's the one I need to remove. Plow this. Three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, I'm not dead on board. Fetch puts me to eight. Four, or four, fetch puts me to two. Force puts me to one. I can still draw a Supreme Verdict. Oh no, there's more. Each minute creature gets control. Each creature you control gets plus one plus one. Oh, for each time it has attacked this turn. Oh my god. <laughs> We're so obliterated. All right, yeah, just done on board. Don't even need to know if they had more attack steps. All right, didgeridoo. Uh, pretty good against standstill. Time to bring in creature removal. I'm really excited about that. I'm not even mad. Seal of Cleansing kills didgeridoo or Urza Saga. Null Rod turns off didgeridoo. I don't think Torpor Orb matters here. Plague Engineer. Uh, all of those were a lot bigger than X1. I don't think that's the look. Verdict's very important. Prismatic Ending is important. Wasteland's important. Plow. Uh, Soul Guide Lantern I don't think is good, especially if Nullrod's coming in. I do like Expedition Map, even if Nullrod's coming in. Surgical doesn't matter. Back to Basics could lock them out. Yeah, I feel like Back to Basics is the sort of endgame I'm looking for. If I get all three Plague Engineers in play, it could be good. Right, I'm going to board out for some negation, even though they had that uh, Death Bellow War Cry bullshit. That was crazy and scary. Reason B, I like. Uh, standstill, I'm going to get a little thinner on. We can find spots where it's good, but I don't want to like turn to it against this Urza Saga deck that can then just didgeridoo creatures into play. Uh, do I have to bring in the Swamp if I don't have any black cards in? And no, I don't. All right. This is the deck. On the play, I'm going to keep the Swords to Plowshares hand. I forgot to keep track of which of those Minotaurs were Legends. Like, I shuffled away the Caracas early in that game, thinking they were something different. And I think on one of the later turns, if I could have Caracas one and plowed the other, maybe that would have bought a turn. They're leading on their Saga. Okay. Oh, just straight up had the Didge. The Natty Didge. Okay, I have a Natty removal spell for a Didge. That's good. Gonna fetch basic planes. Back to basics is in my deck. That is part of my plan eventually. Uh, get rid of this. That actually curved out pretty well. That was on the turn. I didn't need my mana for Saga. Right, they can dig next turn. Tutor one up and activate it. Gotta have my plow ready. Oh. Or I can take them back to basics. No, that's a next turn thing. I survive this turn and then go back to basics next turn. 
Right, not a basic, notably. Not a basic. It is a bad land. Loading the mana. Yes, we did, do. Ooh, they didn't activate it. Did they just not have anything? Did they play Simeon Spirit Guide? How are they going to get me here? <laughs> What's the play? Alright, I'm going to enjoy making a Construct token in the meantime. I'm not going to make another one. We are going back to basics here. Um, are we going back to basics here? Yes. Okay. Yes, we are. Dark Ritual. That's how they did your redo. Force of Will that. I think that might be one of the last spells they play this game. At least I hope that's the case. They get Retrofitter, Island, and then with my floating mana, play back to basics, leaving up swords to plowshares. And I can attack for two. Oh no, you didn't. They have another Dark Ritual. Oh, they did basic lands. That's cheating. Lotus Petal. Also cheating. Lotus Petal is the same thing as a uh, non-basic land, though. Just, you get to use it once. City of Traders. Okay, so they can Minotaur me up this turn. I just have to get through one more Minotaur. Drawing the second plow is nice. If this is the one that brings a friend. I'm just going to plow it immediately. Maybe plowing it immediately was crazy. Like, what if they have the a land into more scary Minotaur right now? I have a 3-3 blocker. Do I just die here? Oh god. Uh, yes, I'm gonna pay the tribute on this asshole. I can just trade with it in combat. Okay, that's not bad. Not bad. No, you didgeridon't. Time to start pulling ahead here. Untap into my swords to plowshares. I've got Foundry active. They're down to one mana source, two cards in hand. And the Didge puts the Minotaur in from hand, which means that they need to amass two more mana and a relevant Minotaur. I'm just going to keep going wide on servos here. Land drop's good. The Construct is very close to being bigger than the Minotaur, and then it can start attacking. Oh, there's one mana source. And they don't really have attacks because I can just turn my servos into Thapos, and none of their things trample. I'm going to make a 3-3 in the air and draw a card this turn. I want to start winning this game. Not just waiting. Uh-oh. They're doing stuff. Is this wear tear? Okay, a braid. Alright, that's annoying, but it cost them their Lotus Petal, so deal. Shark Typhoon, get in. I think I'd rather hold up Force of Will than cast Brainstorm here. The board is stable. I can beat a spell. 5-3 creature is attacking. I'll block with 3-3 three, three creature. Sure, deal. Now I can brainstorm. I have some extra stuff laying around. Shark Typhoon is a banger. Don't even think I need this plow anymore. Put back plow and one of the forces. I can just make a 3-3 three, three shark and eat this 2-3 in combat. And then I'm miles ahead. There is a basic planes left in my deck. That's the last basic land to fetch. I can back all this up with force of will. Bottom, bottom. Bottom, bottom. You're going to need a bigger boat. All right, your creature's dead. And I'm attacking you for eight. Oh, yeah, stand still. The one of stand still. This is the board state we were looking to find it on. Though, I, that's actually not even true. Because if they go land giant minotaur off of Dig, then uh, I might actually lose, even though I stand still. We've evened up the sharks versus minotaurs dual deck. On to the deciding round. Is Plague Engineer important? I mean, Death Touch is non, not nothing. Minus one, minus one on their two threes does actually make Plague Engineer just beat them in combat. Is that extra combat Minotaur a 4-1? Is that possible? I feel like in my brain it was a 4-1, but I don't know the name of that card to check. Yep, no idea what that's card, that card is called to, to figure it out. Are they better than Jace, the Plague Engineers? On the draw, I mean, Jace is a blue card for force. That doesn't matter some amount of the time, though. But it is really nice the rest of the time. Is this a Crucible of Worlds matchup? Like, if I want, if I'm bringing in any Plague Engineers, I'm bringing in all three. Like, this is not like a one of situation. It's just like, do I think my spell based control deck is better than the 
some creatures that can make some of their idiots a little bit smaller deck. Like I could cut the Timeless Dragons and Crucible and bring in those three things. Yeah, I actually think I'm into that. And yeah, the last stand still can go. We're just not doing that. We're going to beat them on the board with our spells and our bigger sharks. At least that's the plan. Oh my god. This is almost what I want, but no white source. I am going to keep. Like, the Force of Will is strong, and if I find a white source, this hand just goes off. I can answer the first Minotaur and the first Dig. Or just fucking sink Hull and Urza Saga. We keep sevens with this deck. It's what we do. It's what we're here to do. I did just board out my two dragons, though, which is two fewer white sources. Uh-oh. Trip's Lotus Petal. God, are they casting a Minotaur? They have the Worthy. Um, I'm going to Force of Will this card. They're down to one card in hand. All right, deal. Uh, land, go. Saga, that's a good follow-up. All right, time to draw the planes. Planes. Yes. Okay. We are going to narrowly survive this one, I think. Seal of Cleansing, your Saga. One card in hand, one mana in play. Oh, no. I'm talking shit too early. I have my own Saga. All right, the, I have two white sources now with two plows. I should be able to navigate the Minotaurs. Ah, oh, Dig from hand. Oh my god. Don't Dig redo this to me. I'm going to cycle Shark Typhoon now. Try to pull ahead on resources, get a chump blocker in play. Might need it. I'm going to play Caracas and just respect the possibility of some scary legendary Minotaur right now. Uh, I think I am going to make a construct in response in case they have a pithing needle. I do want to be on the board. I'm not going to win this game with spells alone. I am going to have to contest some creatures in combat. Oh, they got Lotus Petal. They're moving in. One card left in hand. What is it? It's If it's a Minotaur, it's not coming in yet. Okay, uh, blue, blue, Saga activation. Wish I had a Pithing Needle right now. They'd be so dead. Gonna get Retrofitter Foundry. And I'm gonna play the other planes. Let's just be super careful about Swords to Plowshares and Caracas and removing the Minotaur. They have one card left. Even if it is a Minotaur, I can just send it to the farm. I can hang out with the other cows. Uh, five for Neheb, Dreadhorde Champion. Does combat damage to a player or a planeswalker? You may discard any number of cards. If you do draw that many cards and add that much red. Okay. Um, that is a legendary creature. A Caracas is really good against this deck, actually. We can just tread water on this Neheb as long as you like. I'm not going to spend a real card on that. Uh, in, what, one turn? My constructs will be bigger anyway. Ponder. Elrod. Uh, yeah, okay. I'm going to put Brazen B on the bottom of this stack, put Null Rod on the top of the stack. Do not shuffle. And Null Rod. Bang. You will didgeridoo no more this game. Uh, there's Neheb back. I'm going to bounce Neheb. And I'm going to attack with all my creatures. I have Swords to Plowshares, even if they can remove Null Rod or cast some Haste creature. But I don't think they're going to do either of those things. I think they're just going to die. We did or he did it. On to the next round. I'm on the draw in round four. I'm playing against one of my Patreon subscribers. By the way, if you want to join that club, the links are in the video description. And we have the nuts. I'm going to keep it. And by the nuts, I mean Island Ponder. But the force of will is not bad. Like, this is the type of hand that you can aggressively force to get standstill into play. Uh-oh. Maybe I should have forced this. It's hard to know. If this is Elves, forcing this is terrible. If it's Hollowvine, forcing this is actually pretty good. Elvish Reclaimer. Do I want to aggressively force this thing? Uh, it's so tricky. Uh, yeah, whatever. This is an aggressive force hand. Let's, let's use it. Buy myself some time to find my white removal. It's actually really good here. Ponder. Force, force, brainstorm. I'm going to keep the second force. If they, I think I'm going to force and stand still here 
just like literally whatever they do, I'm just going to force it and then cast standstill. Unless it's Alice or Shep, in which case, I'm out of luck. I would love to just see like Elvish Visionary go. Yes. Of course, literally anything. We're just going in on standstill. Bet. They have Dryad Arbors they can fetch as the elf deck. And that puts pressure on the board without casting spells. But they only have two of them. And I have a lot more payoffs than that. And mine hit harder. Like any Shark Typhoon trades off with a Dryad Arbor and then we're fine. If it becomes a 2-2, they can't attack through that. All right, they're on the casting spells version. Okay, that's probably smart. But all right, I'm done forcing spells, by the way. I paid one extra card for the first force, one extra card for the second force, and the standstill cost a card, and I just drew three. So basically, we were treading water through the first three turns of this game. And now, as the dust settles, they have three cards in hand to my six. Versus Saga is a good one. Yeah, I'm going to lead on that. And I'm going to plow the Elvish Reclaimer immediately. I don't want them to be able to untap and start using that thing. I played the two for one game to get into the one for one game, and that's now my plan. Nobody's playing Supreme Verdict and Legacy right now. If I get a chance to cast that card, it will be a surprise. And I think the three Plague Engineers out of the board are going to be a surprise too. This is literally the matchup that I brewed up Esper to play against. Like, uh, during Eternal Weekend weekend, Elves won one of the events. It put up a bunch of top eights in across both of them. And then like by day three, I was like, I want to play blue, but I got to beat Elves. And that's what the Plague Engineers are for. Hopefully I can put Plague Engineers money where my mouth is. They hardcast Once Upon a Time for Misty Rainforest. Got another Bayou. Two cards left in their hand. Oof. All right, yeah, whatever. That's like mildly annoying, but it's not actually something that I'm going to spend a force of will on. The constructs are still three threes, even if uh, I can't activate the retrofitter foundry. I'm going to brainstorm now. Try to turn this all land hand into some action. Okay, I did find Supreme Verdict. Timeless Dragon is here also. Now we'll see how this game shakes out. I do have a blue card in Supreme Verdict to pitch if they just slam Natural Order right here. Zenith for three. Uh, what does that do? I'm going to fetch in response just in case. Whatever it is, I'm probably just going to untap and Supreme Verdict it. But okay, go ahead. They have like a Reclamation Sage. Uh, oh, right, Grist. Yeah, yeah, that one. You can't Supreme Verdict that. You can Supreme Verdict the insects it creates, though. Yeah, Grist is a pain in the ass. They can attack with Oof, but not Visionary here. But that means I have a good attack on Grist next turn. Yeah, this is the second matchup where having a Pithing Needle would be pretty nice. But I simply do not. Okay, um, I can still force a Natural Order. Yeah, I'm actually going to move in on challenging the board first. And then we'll mop up later. Uh, I want Retrofitter Foundry. That oof isn't going to be in play forever. I can put a big attack on Grist right now. Like taking a chunk out of Grist and putting them in the Abyss, managing their creature count are both good things for me. And I'm going to hold on to Ponder to be my blue card for Force of Will because I really want the Supreme Verdict at some point. One card left in their hand. Glimpse of Nature is a dead card right now. Natural order I can counter. Dragon lands. Are we just going to get both Dried Arbors and try to hoof? Oh, they're going to use the Dried Arbor to kill a construct. Okay. Yeah, this is why I didn't Supreme Verdict right away, because I want them to have to respect the constructs in play. And then once they dedicate resources into that, I can be like, uh, JK, I had the Supreme Verdict the whole time. And I am going to get the the other tundra with dargan right now as much as i would have liked to just slam five mana four four flyer in this matchup like i don't think they can actually beat that right now i gotta clear grist first but after that that's not actually a thing they're really equipped for okay now they can chump block with elvish visionary losing a piece of material 
They can double block with Visionary and Dried Arbor, losing two pieces of material. They can trade with Collector Oof and turn on my Retrofitter Foundry. There's not a lot of good options here. Oh, it looks like they're going for the double block. I love that. Okay, yeah, double block lined up. Oh, backed up. Changes their mind. I think they just realized how bad Swords of Plowshares is on that double block. And now they're thinking about if it's worth the risk. All right, just a clean little jump. I am happy to put them in the abyss and keep them there. And here comes my dragon. They can lose Grist to kill dragon. But I'm that... That's fine. Once Grist is removed, the Supreme Verdict mops up this game. The Supreme Verdict turns on Retrofitter Foundry, and then I have more creatures also, and they've been top decking for a couple turns now, so I, I think we're in good shape. Uh-oh, there's the Shep. Supreme Verdict incoming. Okay, Grist is popping off. They're probably going to sack the Visionary to kill the Dragon. Because Dragon was going to kill Grist anyway. This is a forced play. And they only have one card in hand, so you can't, like, land Natural Order uncounterable here. I'm going to attack and then probably Supreme Verdict, depending on if they block or not. Oh, I love Wasteland. Okay. Um, attack. Do we get a block? I don't think so. I can't imagine this is worth writing a Shep for. Okay, now let's mop it up. White, white, blue, blue. Splat. And... I can constrict the options. No, I think just moving forward with Retrofitter pushing onto the board is the play here. Zenith for one. This is probably Shepard to set up for a future natural order. Oh, okay. It's. Yeah, that makes more sense. Never mind. Yeah, that one is the biggest creature in their deck. Also generates advantage over time. Time to. Draw or cantrip into one of the many white cards left in my deck. All right, Swords of Plowshares, right there. Now I can hard cast Force. Oh, fucking stand still. We did it, Jeffrey. Swords of Plowshares, your creature. Wasteland, your land. And take your time. That's how the end game looks with this deck. Both Dryad Arbors are accounted for. If they do anything, I'm going to draw three cards. What can you do? Um, Zenith for two. This is probably Elvish Visionary to try to dig. I am not gonna dignify that with a force of will. Yep. The old three mana Elvish Visionary. There's probably some vanilla card for green and two that draws a card when it enters the battlefield. I should figure out what that is to make that joke in the future. Another servo. I do think having more things is better than having bigger things against elves. Like, I could have made this a Thopter with the intent of making a Construct in the near future. Ponder. More white cards. I like those. Okay, go. There's not enough mana over there to Shepherd plus Uncounterable Natural Order, so I don't need to respect that. They might be out of Fetchables, too. There's two Bayous, two Dried Arbors, and two Forests in play already, or accounted for already. I'm going to make a Giant Shark and just start mushing. I'm going to hide the black mana. Uh, I'm just not going to fetch the Underground Sea this game. And then hopefully the Plague Engineer will come out of nowhere like John Cena for game two. Matic ending. All right, handful of white cards at this point. And blue cards. Continue my relentless attacking with my token shitters. Right, now I can, even if they do have land Shep natural order, I can plow the Shep and then force the natural order. I don't think there's anything left that I need to worry about here other than just playing correctly. And if they do nothing, Brazen Borrower plus Retrofitter Servo is lethal. That's seven flying and then three one ones on the ground. Okay, they realize that they're out of lands, out of outs. And now, out of nowhere, ba ba da ba, ba ba da ba, Plague Engineer. What's up, buddy? Right, force Negation is out. Torpor Orb is actually, like, medium good. It turns off Hoof. It turns off Visionary. I guess those are the two things it turns off, though. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Test of Talents, Exiling Green Sun Zenith is nothing to sneeze at. All Breacher turns off Visionaries and Glimpses. 
I do like back to basics sometimes against elves. I just don't think I need it with this particular build. Uh, Soul Guide Lantern doesn't matter. I don't like Force of Negation. Love Supreme Verdict. Standstill, I like, but in smaller numbers. I like Jace in smaller numbers. Timeless Dragon also can get a little thinner. Force of Will is good when they don't have Shepard and bad when they do. Yeah, I'm just doing the, uh, the I don't know any better shave one of everything plan. Normally, that's not a good sideboard plan. If you're side, if you sideboard like this, where you're just like, ah, one of these, one of these, one of these, one of these, that probably means you're just not thinking about your plan well enough. But I think in this case, it's actually justifiable and fine to do this. Uh, they could have choke, I guess. I'm going to bring in a seal of cleansing over another force of will, just in case they choke. Okay, there it is. That's the deck. The Crucible is the worst card that I didn't board out, and here it is in my opener. I'm going to keep this, though. Swords of Plowshares plus Brainstorm is a, a powerful start. And I have the Black Source. Okay, I am going to... I'm going to get Planes and zap this immediately. If, like, the second land is Cradle, uh, that could stop them from casting a 2-drop right away. Turns off Zenith for 1 right away. Fish, okay. Fetching basic planes plays around choke, but plays makes it so I can't cast this brainstorm right now. The hand's a little chonky, but Supreme Verdict is a nice draw. Strong pickup. In case of emergency, I can brainstorm trying to hit a plow or one of my three remaining forces. Or two remaining forces? How many did I board out? Okay, I cut two. There's two forces left in the deck. Uh oh. Uh, there's Glimpse, okay. Claimer. Draw one. Let's see if the the Cradle is here. Nope, okay. That was just a cycle. That's a relief. I'm not going to crack this fetch, just going to draw for turn. Tundra. I'm still a little worried about... Well, Prismatic Ending is in my deck, so I should just do this now. Brainstorm. Uh, standstill. That's so fucking funny. Um, not even close to playable, but it is funny. I'm gonna put back Crucible and Basic and Standstill. No, Basic Island Standstill. That's close. Like I might want to keep the Standstill floating for after the Supreme Verdict. I don't think so though. No, you just can just get out of here. Play Expedition Map. Not using that mana for anything else. Uh, this hand didn't materialize into. The type of interaction I'm looking for. If they do just go land natural order, I could lose here. If they get progenitus, though, I get to Supreme Verdict, mop it up. But they saw Verdict game one, so I don't doubt they would just slam progenitus right now. They did just untap with Reclaimer. They could set up a multi turn, like get Cradle and then do stuff line. But they will be disappointed in that result because I'm going to Verdict this turn. Just attacking for two. That's a relief. Please put some creatures into play, maybe? Nope. I could not be so lucky. All right, I'm going to shuffle away the, the thing. I didn't board in the basic swamp, so I'm just going to get basic island here. Draw. Urza Saga. Oh, cool. I have white, white, blue. One with Urza Saga. I can play Verdict right now while snaking my Saga into play and... I have two lands that are not islands if they do just jam choke right now. Right, Reclaimer in response. Cradle gets a lot worse when you have no creatures, but I was about to kill a Dryad Arbor anyway, so that was a free roll. Tight. Four cards in that hand. We can fetch the other Dryad Arbor right now. Keep the pressure up. I'm tapped out. Verdict's in the graveyard. We still haven't seen black mana. Played Forest. Could natural order here. Did not. Well, could still do it post combat if it's progenitus. All right, that didn't happen. Good. Could hard cast Force of Vigor. That would be pretty rough. I'm going to land go here. I could make a 3 3 shark or a 2 2 construct depending on what combat looks like next turn. They didn't end step Force of Vigor. I think that would have been the time to do it if that's what they had. Oh, fuck. Uh, off of a four card hand with Cradle in play. This might be GG. Not a whole lot I can do about that. Endurance, okay. 
The deck doesn't really use the graveyard that much, other than the Crucible and the Hall, neither of which are currently online. They just shuffled a Supreme Verdict into my deck. I'll take that. Instead of making a construct with Saga, I could use Expedition Map to shuffle my deck and then Cycle Shark Typhoon for one, and that gives me an extra look at that Supreme Verdict that just went into the pile. All right, I am going to map, and I can grab Wasteland. I'll grab Wasteland out of respect for the Cradle, though so that's really bad. They, they have Reclaimer in play. Completely irrelevant. All right, I am going to... Cycle Shark Typhoon, get another look at Supreme Verdict. I think that's better than making a construct. I need cards right now, not a 3 3. Ponder can still find Supreme Verdict. Land. I'm just going to float mana. Get the Retrofitter. Ponder. Shark Typhoon ending. Standstill. If one mana floating, I could end the Reclaimer and then Waste Cradle. That's not bad. And Shark Typhoon's a good follow-up. Okay. And Reclaimer. Reclaimer? I hardly know her. Wasteland. Do I take out Cradle or a Dryad Arbor, actually? I think it's Dryad Arbor. But Cradle. And make a Servo. Like, they stopped glimpsing with mana still available, which means that their hand is non-creature spells or non-creature cards. And the type of non-creature cards, like one of the biggest non-creature cards that could be in their hand right now that they wouldn't play is Gaius Cradle, which is a legend. But taking out Dryad Arbor is good for taking out two mana, which is the same two mana I would get if I take out Gaius Cradle without turning on more Cradles in their hand. It looks like we're just gristing here. Yep. And I'm sure they're just going to start making insects. It would make no sense to sack Endurance to kill one of my tokens. Build over a Cradle. Uh, both Dried Arbors are dead. I, I think this is an empty fetch land again, unless they play three basics. Okay. Do I know what's on top of my deck? Uh, I do, but I forget what it is, because I'm an idiot. <laughs> Tight. Okay, uh, I'm pretty sure it is... I have no idea. If I play Jace, it dies to Grist, but I, I do need to turn this hand into good cards. I have some blockers in play. A Brainstorm is worth four mana to me at this point. Oh, right, it was Standstill. Yeah, yeah, I didn't want that. Put back Plains and Flooded Strand. And then play another Flooded Strand. Get to at least represent Swords to Plowshares here. There's two Supreme Verdicts, three Plague Engineers in this deck. The black mana is still chilling. Complete surprise. Wrist is going to exchange an Insect for Jace. You got it. Another fetch land that has no fetchables, I'm fairly confident. Endurance can't attack because that lets me kill Grist, and also it's a free block because Retrofitter can flip Servo into uh, Thoppy. I'm going to stop playing around Choke and just get the lands that let me play my game. Oh, that's good. Um, well, time to reveal the black mana. Prismatic ending, target endurance, black, white. Blue. I could just go straight for Grist, but they're out of Dryad Arbors. I'm pretty sure I can. Okay, I'm going to stand still first. If they Endurance, they have to Endurance in response. All right, cool. They didn't, they just don't have it. Now I get to pick off Grist and you're under the standstill. No creatures, no relevant cards in hand. Awesome. And I get to make a 4 4 in the end step. They're going to die pretty quick. They're on a four turn clock. I have another Shark Typhoon and Urza Saga rolled up. You can definitely turn this into a three turn clock, maybe even two. I have not done the math and I'm not going to. I'm just going to attack with what I can attack with. I am not smart enough to do combat math. You're just going to have to accept that. I mean, don't count your chickens before they hatch and everything, but I'm pretty sure we're about to just dismantle elves without using the plague engineers. Okay, standstill pops. There's plague engineer and supreme verdict. All right, all right. We're in business. Oh god. Plague Engineer on Insect. Sweep it up. We're done here. I'm making the biggest possible shark. I'm not messing around with the artifact. Flying creatures are very good against green decks. Generally speaking. Crucible. Okay, don't worry everyone. We are going to get to play the Plague Engineer. 
I was worried that we weren't going to get to play the sweet tech that we built the deck around. Insecto. Bang. Shadow Realm. I don't think we needed that Plague Engineer. We're probably going to win anyway, but it got it done quick. Nail in the coffin. GG's opponent. We're on the play in the final round against Caden, uh, uh, who I'm pretty sure is Goblin Expert Eli Goings. And Goblins are really good against the card standstill. Like, if even on the play, if they go lackey, I just lose. If I had a fetch land instead of mono blue, I would keep and be all in, but I have to mulligan this. And this is an exciting time to have a sideboard with three Plague Engineers in it. Uh, I am going to bottom Force of Negation. I can Prismatic Ending and Aether Vial. Like, that's not even a problem. So, uh, like, Aether Vial is the only thing you would point Force of Negation at in this matchup, and I just don't need to do that. My plan, almost regardless of what happens, whether they go land lackey or land vile or whatever, is ending whatever they play and waste their land. Unless it's a basic mountain. But we'll see. It would have foothills. It is a basic mountain. Smart. He's not an expert for no reason, folks. Okay, I can fetch a basic to play around his wastelands. Exile that. Island go. This is a very classic legacy matchup. The Plague Engineers are probably going to elicit a, a tilted Twitter post, but at least the main decks are pretty close. Oh, it's the food chain version. All right. That makes this wasteland a lot worse, and it makes Supreme Verdict extremely exciting. Okay. Uh, I'm going to play Tundra and just make this Supreme Verdict do work. I am going to cycle Shark Typhoon, by the way. I want more cards. Like, the longer I can drag this out without resorting to verdicting, the better. All right, Snoop revealed Ringleader. That does not have any activated abilities, luckily. Okay, we're going to get a tasty little no questions asked three for one off of the Supreme Verdict. However, the Ringleader is going gonna to show up. Yeah, I can't wasteland them off it, and leaving Snoop in play is too dangerous. I'm actually going to cycle Dragon now, instead of cycling Shark Typhoon, because now I'm just locked into Supreme Verdict. But I think he's going to be pretty okay with that, because he can just jam Ringleader and reload. Yeah, the Ancient Tomb is so fucked here. If I could wasteland and, like, tempo them out, but uh, that Ancient Tomb just jumping ahead of wasteland was so good. Right, we got Ringleader and two Lackeys. Okay, no land drop. Good, 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 good. Time to eliminate the enemy. Ancient Tomb's out. I'm going to make a 4-4 four four instead of casting Plow or doing anything else. 4-4s four are pretty good against 2-2s. Two I've played Limited before. All right, drew a land for turn. Played one of the Lackeys. Ooh. Goblin and Archomancer. Each spell you cast... That's red or green, costs one less. All right, so they can ring lead next turn, no problem. My sorts of plowshares can actually keep them off that, but this cavern just made this force a lot worse. Boo, boo. See what we got here. I'm going to Shark Typhoon for one just right now in my main phase. If I can find like Wasteland or something, <laughs> I literally play two of those. Sorry. And we're just going to play the tempo game. Wasteland, the cavern, swords to plowshares, the cheapenizer, and hold the fort. Time to queue up the pigeon meme. Is this Delver of Secrets? All right, they keep drawing lands. I can't be mad about that. We all know how, how this looked on my side. And Crater Maker. Okay. Next turn, that can punch one of the tutus through the... Okay. Uh, retrofitter... Crater Maker can blow this up, but it'll make a blocker first. This doesn't have Vigilance to it, does it? Okay, no good. If I had just missed 8 damage, I would have quit Magic. I do have Force Blue card if they have land number 4, as long as it's not Cavern. And if they do commit to Ring Leading this turn, then that's a turn that they're not Crater Making. Okay, there is land number 4. Let's see how this plays out. Two cards left in hand. And I am hellbent. I'm empty. 
and I'm scared. That does mean I get to develop with the, the foundry for a turn. Uh, this is one, two, one, one, two, three. One. Uh, I guess this is worth playing. I have no secrets here. This is what I got. I can deal with it. Snoop. Uh oh, that's really good. Can it tap for two mana? Okay. Uh, I'm just going to make a servo. I think having more blockers is more important than higher quality ones. Like if I go to, yeah, they're just going to crater make this at the first opportunity. So, uh, I would have liked to make a four four on this board, but that wasn't going to happen. Okay, do I heads up this brainstorm or wait until my hand can improve? I have planeswalkers. Yeah, I, I have good cards in my deck. I have sorcery speed removal, expedition map, that sort of thing. Map. Okay, now it's fun. Do I want Urza Saga or do I want Hall of Heliod? Is, can Hall make a creature next turn? Can make one, two, one, two, three. Yes, Hall does generate a one, one creature next turn. Okay. We're going in the hall. It's in the hall. This Snoop could kill me at any moment. Just need to fade the Kiki Jiki on top of the deck. If there's Matron. Do I die to that next turn? Matron finds... I don't know what Matron finds. Uh, Bogart Har Harbinger. <laughs> oh, you can cast off the top as well. Okay, yeah. So Matron happens right now. Yeah, I might be dead. Oh, there's a Muxus amongst us. All right, there's no Bogart Harbinger because that's a black card and they tapped out a black. That's not what's happening here. I don't think I can Shark Typhoon. I'm going to have to YOLO into a removal spell. Matron put Muxus into hand. Okay, uh, even if I draw a removal spell now, Muxus is in hand. Yeah, my chance to win this game is come and gone. Time for the sideboard to show up. Oh god, Sling Gang on top and the Shalik in hand. Now, even if I draw the Supreme Verdict, I can get just drained for a zillion on the way through. Ponder. Oh, I found it. That sucks. Fucking slinking, Lieutenant. Uh, attacking with the tutus doesn't matter. I'll get in with the flyers. I am very clearly telegraphing Supreme Verdict right now. And it just doesn't even matter. Bang. Yeah, I'm going to get drained for the number of creatures that are in play. And then Muxus hits the stack next turn. And I'm drawing Urza Saga. So the Muxus has to just stone blank. Not looking good, team. Any uh, war chief or ringleader, or not ringleader, war chief or whatever the fuck, uh, the, the attacking thing. Haste. The attacking thing. <laughs> like I've never played Magic in my life. You know that they're attacking thing. Shalak, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's weird. Uh, maybe or this deals one damage to any target. Yeah, the, uh, Shark Typhoon's not going to help me do, deal with that. Okay, here's Urza Saga. Cavern, one, two, three, four. This costs four. I'm just insulating against Supreme Verdict with by going Peshalik first. And Caracas would have punished that line, but not, not much. Okay, uh, Food Chain confirmed. Gem Palm Incinerator and Snoop just came into play. Two food chains went to the bottom. And Pashalik is attacking me. Um, I don't believe I can win. The top card is a land, and I know that. I have no way to shuffle. Putting Shark Typhoon on top doesn't do anything. All right, yeah, you got me. Now I don't feel bad for those hot wasteland rips earlier in the game. They didn't see black mana at all. Surprise. Uh, Plague Engineer and Torpor Orb are coming in. Back to basics, probably really good against this deck. They have some basics, but they also have a, a, at least three colors of mana and caverns. Deal of cleansing. Uh, that can kill food chain, but this is not an Aether Vile deck. It might be a Chalice of the Void deck. Do I care about that? Probably not. Okay, Force of Negation, Crucible of Worlds. Uh, knowing that they're this build of the deck makes Standstill a lot better, but I'm still getting thinner on it. Brazen Borrower can buy time. I don't love Jace against red decks in general. The graveyard doesn't matter. Force of Will is good in tandem with Wasteland. 
and back to basics, like keeping the caverns under control. Shark Typhoon is material on the board, like challenge combat, so they can't nickel and dime me. Maybe Brazen Borrower just sucks ass, and I should be focusing on Plague Engineer and the white removal. And I'm actually going all the way empty on standstill. Let's figure this out in other ways. I still have Shark Typhoon and Hall. Do I want to go back to basics if Hall is my plan? Is it always going to be worse for them? Or just sometimes? I could play one back to basics and one standstill, split the difference. Just find it if I'm ready for it. Now I like the cheese factor on the play. I'm playing both. Okay, this is my plan. It just occurred to me that this build might have choke in it. They are a, a green build. We'll see. They can have choke or carpet. Oh, everything's on the table. Oof. Um, no blue card to go with my force. Or no white land. But all of my best sideboard cards. Like I could turn one map. Turn two. Tutor up. Expedit or uh, underground sea, and then fingers crossed. This hand just dies to wasteland. Wow, this is tough. Um, I'm keeping it. Bet. Let's go. This is the type of hand that five minutes from now you all might be angrily in the comments telling me why would you keep this hand, you big idiot. But look at this hand. Look how powerful these things are. Any. Fetch land off the top gives me swords to plowshares or plague engineer. Um, the torpor orb is really good against their deck in general. Right, wasteland go. I don't know if the build if this build of the deck. Okay, it does play lackey. I was about to say, does this build even play lackey? All right, a fetch land would be great here. All right, that cycles for a planes a little too late. Torpor orb can slow down the worst things that a lackey can do to me, but I mean it's still bad. If it just puts some like shit that can attack into play another lackey okay come on fetch land horse of wheels not bad i'm gonna cycle timeless dragon come up with a basic planes i really don't want to get choked but i have force of will so i'm not going to all right and wasteland i can i can deal with if they have land uh blow up an artifact goblin I think I'm going to save my plow for the bigger creature that comes out of the goblin. Wow, nothing's coming out. Hell yeah. Sideboard tech. Green Verdict's a good one. Okay. I'm going to play Expedition Map. Rack it immediately for a fetch land. I'm going to get Polluted Delta and put it into play. And then pass the turn. The lackeys haven't hurt me yet. Well, they've gotten in for 5 damage, but... They haven't done what they're supposed to do yet. All right, just 4-4 four, four Moxus. I'm not going to crack this fetch land. Uh, oh, right. I can plow Moxus. Oh, now I can just Supreme Verdict. But I think plow Moxus play Plague Engineer is better. Oh, wait. I don't even need to play plow Moxus because uh, my thing has Death Touch. All right, let's see if we... Surprise. Black mana. My opponent knows what this means. Goblin. Zap. And I think I should waste. Yeah, I'm actually just going to hit the wasteland where I can. I'm going to sort the plowshares. I don't think blocking is the, the strat. Like, this is going to do more in play than it is trading for Muxus. Miserable, hateful deck that I'm playing. And I love it. Remember when you all told me I shouldn't keep that hand and I'm a big idiot? Well, who's the idiot now? I'm going to make a 4-4. Four -four. Dargan. Okay, a force of will to keep things from getting out of hand. Plague Engineer is still in play. And if things do somehow get out of hand, I still have Supreme Verdict. Cavern makes that worse. That's okay. Caracas makes it better. Attack for six. Let's get to work. There are no sweet enchantments in my graveyard. No saga. Nothing. All of Heliod is just wastes. And not wasteland, just waste. They drew another cavern. Ponder, okay. Find me the Shark Typhoon to win the game with. Oh, what's this? Red Blast, okay, deal. That's fine. I can still hardcast Force. Uh, not that I expect that to matter a lot against the Double Cavern. Maybe that I'm supposed to hardcast Force that, since any creature spell is going to be uncounterable. 
I'd be willing to believe that. Though pyrotechnics or pyrokinesis. Pyrokinesis. Yeah, the, the free red spell that deals damage to creatures. I could still force. Okay, we did it. Sideboard tech. Kept the colorless hand. Delivered. Red elemental blast confirmed in this deck. That makes back to basics a lot worse. I was kind of on the fence about Back to Basics anyway, because my Hall and Saga are so important to my plan. I think I am going to go down to one Back to Basics, and I wish Brazen Borrower could target my own things, like pick up Plague Engineer in response to removal, but that is not how that card works. Could still bring in the Seal of Cleansing and just respect Food Chain a little bit, but I refuse. I'm not interested in respecting Food Chain. Fuck Food Chain. All Breacher can't just be like a creature, but their deck doesn't draw any cards. That It's a bad creature. Don't Pouncing Jaguar. That also gets hit by Red Blast, so strictly worse than Pouncing Jaguar. It's either Brazen Borrower or just commit to the Back to Basics. I mean, Crucible does a similar impression to Back to Basics without being terrible for my own plan. It's also not blue. Is every answer to a Lackey in? Yes. All my forces, all my... Seven one mana removal spells. Yeah, I have 11 answers to a turn one lackey, and they only have four lackeys. So <laughs> let's hope for the best on mathematics to pan out here. Okay, I'm on Crucible. I think Crucible Wasteland is just as effective as Back to Basics against their deck without fucking up my own plan. Uh, this hand has no action against a lackey, which is a shame because it's beautiful otherwise. I want to keep seven. I think I have to mulligan. Oh god, it's getting worse. Go to five. Jesus. Come on, deck. How many white sources are in the deck? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve white sources in the deck. Uh, drawing out of a 53 card deck at random. That's less than one in four cards as a white source. Ugh. Again. Okay. Keep. I don't think I get to play Force of Will here. I have to send three cards to the bottom. It's Force, Force, and Wasteland. Okay, this sucks. Bummer. The 4-1 ruined by a Malta 4. And it, it, was, it was right. Look, there's the Lackey. Uh-oh. Saved, saved, saved. Okay, let's see if Torpor Orb can carry this game by itself. Snoop. With Lackey on top. Okay. All right, Torpor Orb. Let's get to work. And I drew the third land. We could work this up into Supreme Verdict. Oh, you can cycle this. That's fun. How the fuck does that work? Probably just doesn't. Like, you have to discard it. That's part of the cost. So you, it actually just doesn't do anything. Okay. Uh, I have a blocker now that can pivot up into... Like, it absorbs the Lackey hit, trades with Lackey. Or the, I know they have Incinerator in hand, so trading with Lackey doesn't really matter. But drawing the extra card is huge here. Okay, I'm going to get a Tundra. Play to my outs. Oh, ah, uh, shit. There's no scrub land. I need double white, actually. Like, getting the black mana would be nice there in case I find an engineer, but Supreme Verdict is literally in my hand. I'm playing to that. Oh, Red Blast, saving the incinerator. That's nice. Okay, I drew the black mana. The fourth mana and the black mana. The double banger. Ring leaders in play. Uh, okay, I mean, I've done my best. Is it good enough? Get him out of here. They have Gem Palm Incinerator, Cavern, and two mystery cards in hand. Shark Typhoon and Hall. Like, the gang's all here. Can we get it done? Masked Vandal. ETB, no trigger. Okay, I mean, <laughs> uh, I may have shouted. A little too early about the the Maldifor, because this has worked out extremely well. Some potent sideboard cards doing work. And they have Gem Palm Incinerator and a mystery card in their hand, and next turn I'm gonna start making three three sharks. Do 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 do. Alright, there's an uncounterable ringleader. Their last card is Gem Palm Incinerator. They can punch through a three three shark next turn. Or well, if they find a one drop, two drop goblin, they can punch through a three three shark. Do I cycle now to hit my land drop? I don't think so. I mean, yeah, yes, I do. I actually easily do. 
Okay. Did what I was supposed to do there. Now I can 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. Now I can make a 1, 1 shark every turn. And slowly grind up to 2, 2 shark. Okay, cool. Land. They can't get through my shark this turn. We are stable. How the hell did this happen? Blind stupid luck? I would accept that answer, honestly. Um, I'm going to cycle now to try to hit my land drop. Every land drop I hit makes my shark bigger for the following turn. Right, they can kill the 1-1 one, one shark with incinerator. That's fine. That was in exchange. I cycle my thing, you cycle yours. Okay, I, I have 2-2 two, two sharks every turn now. 2-2 two, two is bigger than most goblins. All right, Exalted lets them trade Ringleader off. I will take the trade if they offer it. Yep, easy deal. Fetch in the end step. Gonna get another Tundra. Dark Typhoon on top. Draw it. Dark Typhoon cycle. Prismatic ending can answer Noble Hier or Ignoble Hierarch next turn, which makes their attacks not good again. Snoop, shit, that's a dangerous one. Okay. I have the answer to Snoop. They can attack for two here. Uh, do I need to block this? No. I'll leave that around. If I pick up one, two, one, two, three, yeah, horse just doesn't matter here. I should invest in the future. I'm going to pick up Typhoon, draw that. I'm going to end the Snoop, white, black, tapping lands that aren't. Oh, I should have attacked. I'm not blocking, so I should have attacked there. Or I can block this turn because I get to make the world's biggest shark next turn. I should probably absorb damage where I can. Okay, yeah, that makes sense to me. Holy shit. <laughs> Sometimes this happens. Goblin. <laughs> Sorry, Eli. <laughs> one, two, three, war chief. Okay, one, one, war chief. I get to make a two, two shark here. It's the Lord of the Sky. If I find the second Plague Engineer anywhere near the top of my deck, we're just putting them in the trash. Yeah, he just said, I'm never not registering Wasteland again. This, uh, yeah, this hall has been a complete beating. And I'm actually gonna attack with both my creatures. I did not activate hall this turn, but I drew another Shark Typhoon, which is like basically the most disgusting juke imaginable. Now I just get a 6-6 six, six shark. Yeah, no attack. No is better. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Cycle for 3. In response, put it back on top. Now I'm in just like the full Insano mode. Get a 3-3, three, three, redraw the Shark Typhoon with my full mana every turn. Towards the plowshares to back it up. Okay, yep. This one should end pretty quickly. 3 cards in hand. I am at 8. I'm going to make a 2-2 two, two shark this turn so I can hold up plow. But yeah, wow. <laughs> we got the scoop on the on the back of potent sideboard card into gigantic sweeper card. Like I, mul I mulled a 4, like you all saw it. But important lesson here, the mulled a 4 was necessary because that until I went to 4, I couldn't answer turn 1 lackey, which, by the way, he totally had. So I answered the lackey. I, I, I got pretty lucky finding the torpor orb in reasonable time before it was too late. And then uh, some discipline fetching, like when I was almost tempted to get the underground sea, but I was like, no, I need double white. And then I cycled into the swamp, which I, if I had fetched sea, wouldn't have cast Supreme Verdict. So making the most out of low resources there, playing to the outs. And obviously I hit the outs, which is pretty fortunate but if you didn't play to them then they wouldn't have been there at all to even rip into wow that was exciting put up a bread and butter 4-1 and if i remind you all those hours ago my loss in round one was to a straight up onboard punt just like fucking forgot to click my soul guide lantern and then i died to uro exclusively when everything else was under control this was a 4-1 with easy 5-0 in reach if i had just played correctly I am I'm a little surprised at how well this went. I guess maybe not really because the metagame right now is pretty inbred for fair creature like Uro versus Uro, Endurance versus Endurance kind of combat. And 
This deck's just not subscribing to any of that. Wasteland is not the most popular thing right now. I mean, it is, but what the fuck am I even saying? Like, I, I just stopped to think about that for a second. Almost every deck plays Wasteland. What am I saying? Okay, Re restart that train of thought. It's been a long league. Uh, <laughs> there are enough basic lands in this deck that can ignore Wasteland. And the format is not very good at playing around Wasteland right now, which is what I was trying to spit out. The four-color control decks, Wasteland will get them, even if they have some basic lands in the deck, like even if they have three or four, you can still keep them from double spelling with a repeatable Wasteland. Like, how good was Crucible in this league? It, it took over multiple matches. It was worth a ton of cards, just being this fun of one of in the deck. Standstill can be in, it can be out, it doesn't really matter. Like, if your sideboard does more work than Standstill does, like, don't be afraid to cut that thing. I did it pretty often. Timeless Dragon was a banger, the whole league. Uh, Jace was okay. <laughs> I mean, I guess Jace was good, but... Honestly, of all the cards present in this list that I'm looking at right now, Jace was the... Jace and Brazen Borrower did the least in this league. But that doesn't mean they're bad, it, obviously. It just means that the way that these particular five matches lined up, they weren't the best. Plague Engineers came in strong. Our last run up to the, the end of the league was Elves and Goblins. Hello. Two famously heinous matches for blue-white control. And there we go. There was one big gap, and I slammed it closed with an extremely heavy-handed sideboard plan in Plague Engineer. Three of them. And that's what we were trying to do here. I think this was a wildly successful outing for the deck. The 5-0 was just a, you know, I, I, I can't quite call it a misclick, but definitely a, a mispunt. Uh, if I wasn't recording or if we were in real life or, and I wasn't worried about the chess clock, there was just like a, enough subtle distractions that I forgot to click the thing until Uro was already being paid for, at which point it's too late. But I think if I activate that Soul Guide Lantern, this is a trophy league, and I'm very happy with that result. Jack, thank you for asking me to follow through on this idea. I'm glad I did. I hope people have fun with this because I definitely did. This is this is such an awesome deck, and I love playing it. I love iterating on it. It's been a few months since I touched it, but this, this version feels really good in the current metagame. Thank you all for watching. Make sure to check out the merch, the Patreon. Buy an Island Potter Keep shirt. Buy an Island and Ponder and Planes and Stancil and Sharks shirt. Uh, all of my shirts are inspired by this archetype. Uh, that, that's kind of the thing. And if you enjoyed this, support the channel. And thank you very much for watching. See you next time.